I'd like to introduce today, we have Carol Helsel interviewing Kathleen Cullen, who is the Senior Vice President at PhD Consulting, and Flo Ludley, who is the Founder and Principal at Navisync. Um, all of our guests today have extensive experience in the hospitality industry, um, from commercial strategy, technology, and um, have led teams in corporate and cult consulting disciplines. Um, today, we're going to hear how these women have navigated the industry through partnership and through networking. So thank you for joining. And please, I will also remind you, any questions you have, please feel free to enter them into the chat and we'll be happy to share them with our host and get your answers, your questions answered as soon as we can. Thank you. Here's Carol. Hello, everyone. Great to have you back on another Dragonfly Insights. I'm so excited to welcome Flo Lugley, who has been my mentor, we're not going to say for how many years, um, but for a really long time and um, has just been my go-to person for any advice, leadership questions to just bounce ideas off of, um, and has just also been just personally a really amazing friend to me. So thank you for joining us, Flo. I appreciate it that you're here. Thank you for having me. I'm pleased to be here. Absolutely. And then Kathleen Cullen uh, is here. And Kathleen and I have a long history as well. Um, all of us go back to meeting at Hedna originally, so the Hotel Electronic Distribution Network Association, a great place to meet people and network. Um, and we were all on the board of Hedna together. Um, and, uh, you know, we have been through a lot of downturns together. We were all through 9-11 together, 2008, now through coronavirus. Um, and Kathleen and I were partners at Inspire Resources, which was our first uh, consulting gig together, right? Um, and we got to the point where we could finish each other's sentences. Um, she has also been a huge partner to me throughout my career um, and she uh, is also personally a very close friend who has uh, seen me through the highs and lows of life. So welcome, Kathleen. I'm glad to have you here. Thank you for having me, Carol. Very exciting. So my first question to both of you, I'll start with you, uh, Kathleen, is, uh, you know, we're humans first here. How are you? How is your family? How are your kids? Uh, getting through all of, of this coronavirus and uh, the pandemic? Well, thankfully, we're all healthy and uh, have remained healthy. So that's, that's the most important thing. Good. Um, and, you know, I have older kids. So um, uh, for me, it's been a bit easier for them to do homeschooling because they, they didn't need some help from me. Um, my heart went out to those with a lot of the young ones because I cannot even imagine. Um, and for me, I'm home anyway, so uh, not much changed on that front. Um, and in terms of keeping everyone around, I kind of enjoyed having the family time. Um, you know, we would do some activities like, you know, we, we have uh, pretty active kids, so we did a lot of tug of war in the backyard and, um, uh, you know, swimming in the pool. So it's been quite nice not to have them scattered all over. Um, but yeah they're missing their friends and they're slowly but surely getting back out to see some of their friends. So very good. Um, any horses yet? Seeing any horses yet? Oh yeah. Well, you know, we, we, my daughter is an avid rider, so she's over right. on quite often riding her horse. So, okay. So she's gotten to continue doing that. That's good. Yeah. I mean, that's a essential activity, right? You got to care for the, the animals. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So Flo, how about you and, and your husband uh, and your kitties and Phoenix? Uh, how are you guys doing? Yeah, we, we're uh, thankfully again, we're doing great. We're staying safe and healthy. We're following all the rules and we're taking advantage of uh, some of the downtime really just for some us time. Um, uh, without travel, it's uh, I think my husband and my two kitties are uh, very happy to have me around. Uh, they're not going to be happy once I start to travel again. Uh, we've been playing some golf because in Arizona, 
golf courses were deemed essential, uh, as they should be. Um, <laughs> I've been learning to shoot. We've been enjoying our wine. Uh, none of those at the same time. Um, but, uh, <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> we have been very, very fortunate. So uh, I think I'm thankful for that. Very good. Well, I'm glad you guys are well. So, you know, as I said at the top, we've known each other for a long time. All three of us have, uh, you know, been in each other's corners, um, you know, have worked together on a number of industry initiatives and, and projects. In fact, Flo, at one time you hired Kathleen and I to do a project for you at, at a company you were at. Um, you know, we all in the business that we're in today, we contract and subcontract with each other and each other's resources and, you know, and, and work very closely together. Um, but, you know, if you look back, I, I can say, you know, from a, my life, uh, I always mention you, Flo, as my mentor, and I always mention Kathleen as my partner and my the person who's in my corner and my advocate. Um, so asking you that question, Flo, like who in, in your career has been someone who has been a mentor to you? And, uh, you know, and then how have you done the other side of it to become a mentor uh, to people like me? Yeah, well, you know, uh, when I sort of started out in the industry, um, it, it was even more so a very male-dominated industry. So uh, I never actually had a formal mentor, but uh, I've had several people throughout my career that have inspired me and, and have actually given me some stretch opportunities. Um, most of the men, uh, because as I said, very few women held executive level, ro level roles, um, so they, uh, I can remember one uh, when um, there was an opportunity to become president of HEDNA, and uh, I called and said, you know, this is going to take a lot of time, and I just want to make sure you're all right, and his, his words were, go for it, it's great. So they've allowed me to grow uh, not only professionally, but personally as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the way to being appointed president of WISCOM by Steve Holmes and Scott Anderson to uh, helping lead the due diligence for the Galileo acquisition with Sam Katz and, and Steve. So um, there's been a lot of folks that have given me opportunities. I've been very fortunate. Um, I would say that early in my career, I would go to these distribution conferences and I would see up on stage people like Pat Going and, and Debbie McGrath. And I would remember, I remember sort of sitting in the audience saying, I want to be like them one day. And uh, they were very open and, and sharing and so forth. Um, more recently, besides, uh, you know, people like you and, and uh, others, I've had a special friendship with Kathy Masunitz, as you know, used to be uh, mm -hmm. the uh, yeah. former Sabre president. Dorothy Dowling of Best Westerns and, and many others. Yeah. And so um, I believe that you get what you give. Um, and yeah. so um, even while somebody like you might consider me a mentor, I think that I get as much um, in return for my uh, friendship with you as uh, I give. And so I'm very grateful for the relationships that I've been able to um, culture during my career. Yeah. Amazing. What about you, Kathleen? Well, um, you know, I, I like Flo, has been very blessed with um, meeting people along my career that have really been quite impactful. Um, I, Flo, I love what you just said about, you know, you would see people up on stage at some of these conferences and I want to be you. You were one of those people for me. I used to see you up on mm -hmm. the Hedna conference and I was just wowed. And um, same with Michelle Woodley. You know, Michelle Woodley is always... Mm -hmm been an amazing uh, supporter and mentor of mine. Um, you know, I was very blessed early on to, to, to work for her early in my career. Um, and, um, you know, over the years, um, I stayed in touch with her and she was kind of the person that I would pick up the phone and call when I needed to bounce some ideas back and forth. And um, uh, lucky enough to have found her again and uh, working for her again um, in my current role. Um, but there's been other people along the way that you know um, have touched my life. And um, again, I've just been very blessed to work for some amazing people and been given a lot of great opportunities um, along the way. 
Yeah, you know, I think um, it, there are several sides to this, obviously. I think there are those that we consider to be mentors and then those that we consider to be partners, right? And, yeah. you know, I've been blessed to have a partnership with Kathleen since I was president of Penn and she was vice president. And we were we got so close and that's when we probably started finishing each other's sentences. But we realized that you know, she she has strengths where my weaknesses are, and I have strengths where her weaknesses are, and and we didn't we we focused on each other's strengths, and you know, and lifted each other up where our weaknesses were. Um, if I needed to look at an Excel spreadsheet that's this big, and Kathleen could <laughs> be like, okay, this is what it says. <laughs> um, so you know, I think that that in addition to to mentoring, that there's this partnership that comes along, and I and I love what you said, Flo, about you know there were very few women at the time, and now I think we're blessed to have um, so many women leaders that we can look up to, and that um, you know we can uh, also uh, reach behind us in a sense and say here's the younger generation, and and I feel it's our job as people who are seasoned seasoned in the industry to bring those people forward and hopefully, you know, they're going to do far more than we ever did. And they will be CEOs of hotel companies where there is, you know, there are so few uh, women who are. So, um, you know, when it, when it comes to how do you meet people, um, you know, one of the ways in my life has been networking. Um, so tell, tell me Kathleen, you know, why do you believe networking is important? Why has this been important in our careers? I think it's been vital, you know, for, uh, the, the main thing for me is it opens up a lot of doors and opens up a whole new person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I, if I stay in my own little world, then I only have my perspective and the people that are immediately around me. And I think it's really critical um, to open yourself up in order to see different perspectives and learn from others. Um, and kind of put yourself out there, which is not comfortable for many. I'm one of them. You know, working was always, always a struggle for me. Um, still is. So, but it's important enough to me that I really push myself to put myself out there. Um, and, you know, because I've done that and I've allowed myself to, to kind of diversify the, through networking opportunities, um, you know, it, it has really been a huge benefit in, in my career. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's critical for, even if you're not comfortable, push yourself to go. Yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, I'm an introvert. So I, I you know, for totally. me, uh, <laughs> yeah, my husband's the opposite. So he goes in a room full of people at a cocktail reception and is like, how many people can I meet? I go into a room full of people and I go, where's Flo? Where's Kathleen? Somebody <laughs> yep. I know, let me go yep. talk to them. And I have to make myself get out of my comfort zone because I'm totally. an introvert. Totally. And, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm an introvert as well. And exactly what you just said, I look for the people that I know. Sometimes I really try and push myself to, to look for the people that I don't know. Um, but I'll tell you what, it exhausts me because I am an introvert. Yes, me too. I usually have to go, let's say we're at a conference, I have to go back to my hotel room at the end of the evening and just decompress because, you know, people who are extroverts, that's how they get their energy. Um, introverts, we it depletes us, and you gotta like kind of take a step back and, and reset in order to to do it again the next day. Oh uh, yeah, I mean with coronavirus, I have missed my hotel room on travel without my family even. Like my just little alone time in my hotel room just to reset my mind. I think that's been one of the hardest things in in this uh, pandemic for me to have people around all the time, even though some of them are, uh, they're my family. I mean, not some of them, they're all, <laughs> I mean, I'm not hanging out with other people, but um, yeah. So what about you, Flo? I mean, what's it like um, for you with, with networking and, and why do you think it's important? Well, I mean, I think it's the critical su success factor. Um, and uh, I think it's important. And, and like you guys, I mean, and maybe it's just because I'm older, and I feel like I've done so much networking that, you know, when I go to these conferences, to me, it is hard work to, um, uh, to go out and talk to people that you don't know and, and be up and ask questions and then remember who they are and what you talked about. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I, I look for Carol or Kathleen or Michelle or anyone. Um, that's the easy way out. And sometimes that's, that's what I do, or I just say I'm not going because it's too much work. But you do have to force yourself to do it, and it gets easier mm -hmm. as uh, mm -hmm. as you do do it. So if you yeah. um, sort of feel like that's 
really hard or how am I going to do it? You know, uh, just think about a couple of questions you can ask everyone. So tell me about yourself. What do you do? Um, you know, things like that. What did you think of this speaker or whatever? Um, but, you know, once you establish a network, I think it's so important that you have people who you can bounce ideas off, um, who will actually tell you the truth. Yes. Um, and yeah. not be afraid yeah. to, who can encourage you if you're not sure about something. Um, and uh, I, you know, I think that's the most, most critical uh, success factor that you have within the industry. If you don't have a network, and certainly, you know, if you talk to any recruiter, most positions or new jobs are, are filled not from recruiters, but from networkers. If you hire a recruiter, yeah. you usually give them a couple names or they call somebody and say, who do you know about, uh, you know, that might fill this job. So most senior positions at least are filled uh, through uh, some sort of a network. And I think that's probably the thing that sits with me after 30 odd years in the industry and, um, and, you know, the thing that I'm most proud of is actually the friendships that I've been able to make and, and equally the people that used to work for me or who perhaps mm -hmm. looked at me, uh, to me as a mentor, the huge success that they've been able to have um, mm -hmm. is something for me that is, is quite inspiring. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's such a compliment when, you know, someone that has been part of your team or someone that you have been a part of their career success, uh, you know, gets promoted or gets that, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity or, uh, you know, moves into a C-level role or, or moves from director to VP or from manager to director when, you know, you've been part of that. And it's, it is so rewarding. Absolutely. For sure. Um, so, so. I remember back in the Hedna days, I felt like I had two jobs. I had my job I did during the day, and then I had my job I did in the evening and on the weekends. <laughs> um, because at the time, we didn't have an association management company, and, and you know, we were working just so hard. And then, and then we were introducing one, you know, uh, while we, some of us were on the board, um, but that was a lot to onboard them, right? And it still felt like another job. So how were you able, Flo, to prioritize, uh, how were you able to prioritize networking and these opportunities to do things with associations, for example, uh, when you had a full-time job already that was more than enough to fill all your time? So how did, first of all, how did you prioritize those personally? And secondly, how did you uh, convince whoever your manager was to prioritize those for you as well. Well, uh, you're right. I mean, it is, it takes a lot of time and, and, you know, if you're looking for uh, the uh, elusive life, uh, life work balance for me, it very rarely existed. Um, and, you know, I, I looked at networking that it was actually part of my job. So part of my real mm. job was to network. And so that you make that, one of your priorities. And I was very fortunate in that I had the support of the people that I work for. Um, you know, I think the other thing is having somebody at home who helps, who understands yes. that is extremely yeah. important. Um, mm -hmm. And even uh, to some extent involving somebody, involving that person at home in certain of the networking events, that mm -hmm. helps build mm -hmm. even stronger relationships because now you have um, opportunities where you know these people not just from from a professional perspective from from a, from a personal perspective so you know mm -hmm. before we got on we were talking about your kids and how i remember when you were pregnant and you know we we follow uh, sort of the the major life events um because we care about each other it's not just a superficial right. relationship it becomes a a real relationship yeah. um, so i think you just have to be willing to suck it up and 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 uh you know, help uh, for, for for when I was when I was sort of growing up in the industry, I I had some uh, some folks that I worked for, um, and we would discuss why this is a benefit to the company as well as a benefit yep. to me. Um, and you certainly want to work for a company that um, is as vested in your professional uh, development as they are in your uh, professional contribution to them. So um, I was fortunate Absolutely. in that way. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that's a very good point, Flo. I mean, I feel as though 
as I look back across my career, there were many business problems I was able to solve because I could pick up the phone and call you or call Kathleen or call Michelle or, you know, so, um, you know, being able to do that and say, well, what are you doing about this? And it's not proprietary. We're not, you know, price fixing or anything. We're just like troubleshooting and, um, you know, talking about, uh, you know, how can we attack this problem? Can you help me look at it from a different angle? And oftentimes, you know, though uh, though we did some revenue, all of us had the distribution side, and there weren't that many people, and there still aren't that many people who understand hotel distribution, right? And so it was really uh, amazing to have this group of people and this this knowledge level uh, that you could call upon for help to solve problems, and you solved problems at your company because you had that network. So I, I think that's super important. What about you, Kathleen? How did you prioritize it? Well, you know, I, I think exactly what Flo just said was I had the support of my company and my boss um, uh, along my career. You know, no matter where I was, I, I, I had that support. So I, I do think that that's really important. Um, but for me, I also really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the experience that it gave me. I enjoyed um, the, the, the jobs, the um, the networking jobs that I had or um, the industry jobs that I had. And that also helped me be able to be more confident in the networking. Because if I had a purpose, I could go and talk to people about it, right? Um, but yeah, right. in addition to what Carol, you said, you know, the, the weekends, the evenings, I would also add vacations. I remember, you know, doing a lot of stuff on vacations yeah. in order to get the work done. Um, so, you know, you have to be passionate about it because if you're not passionate about it, then it's going to be hard because it is, it, it is like having two full-time jobs in some cases, um, depending on what your role is and, and, and what you're doing. But for me, I love this industry. I absolutely love hospitality. It's in my blood and, um, I, I just get so much satisfaction from really helping the industry move forward certain areas and and continue to grow um so uh, it was never it was never that difficult sometimes time it could be difficult but it was always a yep. priority and a passion yeah, yeah uh, kathleen yeah, sure. that's a, that's a great point because i think it's important that if you're not passionate about what you're doing then you may be doing the wrong thing Yep. And so mm -hmm. um, I don't think we ever really looked at it as work, right? It's right. Just something that had to be done. And you, you mentioned vacation. It, it makes me chuckle because I always had my laptop when we finally were allowed to have laptops yeah. um, in the early days when you had to synchronize and leave it, um, you know, uh, yeah. leave it plugged in for five hours in order to get your emails. Um, but I remember uh, one vacation we were going on and I grabbed my laptop and my husband said, if your laptop, either the laptop goes or I go. And for a minute I was like, <laughs> uh, so, oh no, uh, did, you, did, your, did your laptop go or did he go? No, the laptop stayed and, uh, and we're still married. So. <laughs> Good choice, Flo. Good choice. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's so um, true. I, mean, I, I, I just like Flo, you know, my laptop pretty much comes on every single trip with me um, because I do enjoy that and I do have the passion. And right now I have a, a, a entering senior in high school who is considering colleges and he goes back and forth with, you know, okay, I really have a passion in marine biology is his passion, but I'm not sure that it's going to make a lot of money. And I always say, it's got to be about your passion because passion. If you yep. what you do, you're going to be happy. Right. Absolutely. Totally agree. So we do have one question from the audience and, and I saw something about this and may have to do some research to answer it back. And I, I don't know if you guys, if you ladies know, but it says, do you know any charities or nonprofits that are providing direct services to help individuals on the hot in the hospitality industry who have been impacted by the COVID closures. And I know that I saw something on the hospitality family uh, uh, Facebook page, I believe yeah. about this, but I can't recall it. Do you guys know of any help I, I know, out there? So I know, I, I don't know if it's like a formal charity or a formal group, but I've seen 
um, some postings on LinkedIn from those um, offering some assistance. Um, it, you know, if, if you, I think the posts have referenced, if you've worked with me at some point, need some assistance, call me. There's kind of those mm -hmm. going around. But then also on Facebook, um, there is that group, um, which anybody can belong to um, in the hospital mm -hmm. industry. And there's a lot of resources on there for those that need some mm -hmm. assistance. Um, I, what about, I, and I think, I think HLA may have something on their website to check out. Uh, and I okay. think, and I know for sure that Jason King, um, who is a recruiter, um, was offering anyone who was impacted, I think, like a free consultation. Um, so look at uh, Jason King and Associates. Yeah. And um, Jason King and Associates. Okay. Yeah. And HSMAI, I know, um, recently launched a lot of different resources available to um, yeah. people who might need, who might be interested in getting um, some certifications. Um, yeah. I don't know the price points. I, I, I don't recall that, but I know that there's a lot of information on the HSMAI website um, offering different resources. So definitely a place to go to. Yeah, I think most of their certifications were 50% off, if I recall, but they also off, yeah. said, if you can't afford that, please contact me and yeah. let's talk about it. I think they may have some scholarship money. So, um, you know, definitely resources out there. Um, if we find anything else, we'll certainly uh, publish it on the Dragonfly Insights page on, on our website, dragonflyftr.com. Uh, you know, we'll do some research and, and see if we can find any other resources for you. Um, so, what types of opportunities uh, to network and partner with people did you have you taken in your career? Uh, what are the different things that you sought out uh, that have been good for you? Flo? Well, I think the most impactful were the associations and the conferences. Um, you know, the conferences and in the early days, if you remember all the GDS conferences where yeah, we sit yeah. around in a booth for three or four days um, at a time. Uh, you had a lot of opportunity to uh, network and, and make friends with uh, with the folks in the industries in the other booth, especially during and Amadeus, times when nobody always, was there. Yeah. Amadeus always threw the best parties, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah, like in the desert <laughs> all of uh, Dubai and or then the train Morocco. station in Vienna and all that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I think the associations, uh, HEDNA, HSMAI, um, uh, really are probably the two that come to mind the most. Um, it allowed me to meet and build relationships, again, both professionally and, and personally. Um, and, you know, I think if you're willing to volunteer your time, there's a lot of opportunity for you to, um, to get involved. Uh, these are, you know, these are primarily nonprofit associations run by the members. Um, and there's a lot of uh, working groups uh, that you can get involved on, a lot of initiatives. Um, HTNG is another one uh, where we're just opening up a new working group uh, that talks about sort of hospitality technology and distribution. So uh, those were the ones that were the most impactful to me. I mean, I, I went out and looked at, you know, when, um, the internet was still starting, if you will, um, back in the 90s. And, and I would go into New York to, uh, to these uh, training sessions about how to use the internet, what does it mean, and so forth. Um, but I, I found that the ongoing um, relationships that you're able to continue through associations were probably uh, the most meaningful for me. Yeah. Mm. I, I Kathleen, would... do you have anything to add? Yeah, no, I would totally agree. Um, you know, I started off with with Hedna, as as we've already referenced, and HSMAI. I've been very involved with for for many many years on many different levels, um, and um, uh, different speaking engagements as well, um, such as this, um, and as well as schools. You know, I've done presentations over over the year, web mm -hmm. just recently, um, to to various schools. And, um, I, you know, those are all really good ways of getting out there, um, meeting new people, forming those relationships and those bonds, and, um, uh, and just as Flo said, getting yourself involved. But you, you have to be willing to, to volunteer your time, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll add to that um, one thing that I've 
been blessed to be a part of the past three years is the St. Jude Digital uh, and Innovation Advisory Board um, for our council for St. Jude uh, Children's Research Hospital. Uh, and and I, I actually got introduced to that by uh, someone who worked for me many, many years ago and considered me a mentor. Uh, and she had been at Hilton for many years. So Virginia Suleiman um, from had, she's not at Hilton anymore, but she had been for years and was on that council. And she invited me to come and be a part of that. And, and it has been an amazing uh, opportunity uh, to be more connected with people that are kind of cross other industries and to learn what Amazon or Facebook or PayPal or whoever are doing in the innovation world and how we can take that and apply that um, to, you know, my, my industry, um, right? And so it's been really refreshing, I think, to hear uh, some things from a different perspective in a different industry. So I think if there are opportunities to get engaged in things like that, um, or even with nonprofits, uh, that where you can be associated with a group of people who are just, I mean, brilliant thinkers, um, but then also just real people. And, it, you know, it's, it, that's been a great opportunity uh, that's been recent in, in my career. I kind of shifted some of my time to, to that because I had that opportunity. So, um, so I'm going to, there is a question um, from the audience, but I'm going to save it kind of to the end and I'm going to give you guys a uh, heads up about it from Annette Hogan. You guys know Annette. Um, Annette. So, but, Annette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I know, right? Um, but she wants us to, op you know, open up our crystal, crystal ball. No, she says she doesn't. We she knows we doesn't have. She, we do not have one. Um, but we want to comment on the rest of the 2020 and 2021. But I'm gonna give you guys some time to time to think about that because it wasn't something that we had explored earlier. So think about what your outlook is. Um, for recovery. So we'll get to that later. I'll kind of ask that in a few minutes. Um, so, um, so how in today's environment uh, where we're not going to conferences, I mean, Kathleen, I know you're going to be at HDC, so am I. Yep. See you there nice. in Nashville. Um, but, um, you know, in the absence of these types of things, uh, how have you guys been networking during a pandemic? And what does that look like? Yeah, it's, you know, it's definitely challenging, but I think doing things like we're doing today, for example, you know, um, I, mm -hmm. um, I think this is, you know, my third or fourth webinar that I've been on a panel. Um, so that definitely helps. Um, and, you know, being a part of a couple of those Zoom socialization invitations, um, that is also helpful and um and just reaching out and actually talking to people on the phone yeah. right what a concept mm -hmm. you know you have to wait right. <laughs> somewhere <laughs> you know and it doesn't have to be done all through social media but just reach out and talk to someone on the phone you know i i chatted yeah. with people this morning that i haven't talked to in a couple of years and it was great to catch up with them and um you know just just kind of going back to some of the basics but also keeping up with um, current times, such as all these Zoom webinars and um, social gatherings. Yeah, yeah, you know, Elise, uh, who's part of the Dragonfly team, early on, she said that she decided every week she was going to write down a name that came to mind who, uh, you know, who she hasn't spoken with in years and reconnect with them. And she wanted nice. to be really intentional about taking this time to take an hour out of her day and have a conversation with someone um, that she just hadn't heard from in a while. And so she's been doing that every week and it's rekindled a lot of relationships for her. So I think that that's a you know, great idea. Pick up the phone. Like we do, we can actually talk on the phone and not just text. Right. <laughs> Flo, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, no, I, uh, much like Elise was, I, uh, I was using this time to clean up my contacts. And so I had people in my Outlook contacts um, far too long. In fact, you know, some of them I had just four jobs ago. So I was, I was sort of cross-referencing with LinkedIn. And as I went through it, I was like, oh, wow, I wonder how they're doing. And I would send them a quick note, um, uh, ask them if they wanted to have a chat. Um, I think it's, again, uh, you need to put it in as part of your job. And so if you're laid yeah. off or furloughed, your part of your job is to keep yourself uh, connected and um, mm -hmm. Uh, it's a great time to educate yourself um, and uh, to learn new things. And so, you know, 
make it a priority to reach out to your network on a regular basis. Uh, if you're reading an interesting article and uh, send it to somebody that you think it might be of interest to and say, hey, I read this and I thought of you, I thought you might find it interesting. Um, so you don't always just have to pick up the phone. You can reach out with some information that makes it seem like or, or, or demonstrates that you clearly are thinking about them as you're going through your day. Um, remember past events. So, you know, if you have a memory come up on Facebook or something from a conference a year ago, uh, reach out to those people in that memory. Yeah. And say, hey, wasn't this a great time? Um, you know, can't wait till we get together again, those types of things. Very good, very good. That's awesome. So we do have a question from the audience. It is, um, what is your best tip for helping someone you have mentored um, do their part to pay it forward and mentor future generations? It's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I would say be open and be available, right? Um, it's so easy, and I'm guilty of this myself. It's so easy to get caught up in how busy we are with everything, um, with our paid job, our volunteer job, our families, and just life in general. But just pause if you see somebody that might be looking for, whether it's a formal ask or informal, that they're asking you questions. Mm -hmm. Available and be open. That, that would be kind of my my tip, I guess, for that person. Yeah, I think it's right. I think it's important to put yourself in their shoes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to several people who were furloughed, laid off, got caught in a political uh, change of CEO, oh, and so a new, new team comes in and um, they sit there and say, you know, I thought so and so would reach out to me, and I haven't heard from them. And um, one day you'll be in that position. So, uh, and you'll reach out to that person and you'll say, well, you never reached out to me. So um, I, I think it's just, as Kathleen said, make yourself open, available, put yourself in their position. And remember, people will forget about what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. That is right. so, Absolutely. so true. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's not my quote, that's yeah. a Maya Angelou. So. Maya yeah, Angelou, it's yeah. <laughs> it's just so true. Mm -hmm. So another question um, uh, from our audience. So it says, how have you seen networking change throughout the years? And what are some of the positive, uh, positives and negatives of the types of changes? Wow. That's well, a so much is done through uh, digital today, through email or yeah. text, WhatsApp, you or know, social, or WeChat, social Messenger, whatever. And um, I think maybe too much is done. Um, done that way, I think sometimes you lose the personal touch and you also, I think, lose sometimes, you certainly can't understand the intonation. Um, and so you may lose the um, sort of the core point sometimes. Yeah. Um, there's nothing, I don't believe there's anything like face to face. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, but, um, you know, I think some people uh, feel that they've, they've sent off an email and they sent off a text they check their box and now they're finished. Yeah. And um, yeah. that's not, you know, that's not a relationship. Right. Yeah. You know, Flo, early on, and, and I, I did not take your advice because I find getting a little tiny ball in that little tiny hole to be stressful and not relaxing. But early on in my career, you said, said I should learn to golf. And, and you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't take your advice. But I know that you have done a lot of deals on the golf course and have met, you know, a lot of people and built relationships over the years. Um, do you, is that something that's still happening today? Is that, you know, something people should be looking at as well? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the three martini, remember I did that when the three martini lunch was probably still, and I don't drink martinis, but um, I have to say that <laughs> I, I started playing golf because I would be, uh, I would be attending these franchise conferences uh, when I was with uh, HFS Sendent. Um, and all of the guys would, you know, all the executives and all of our key customers were off on the golf course and the wives were shopping. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't really want to shop. shop. I need to be out on there with the guys. So I forced myself to learn. You can have a conversation. Um, it's just another subject that you have in common that you can talk about. Mm -hmm. 
with uh, with executives. Um, I've you know I've attended some uh, Travel Weekly Pebble Beach events with you know the most senior folks in the industry. Um, won a cruise. Uh, for you know, uh, <laughs> know that. Uh, which we never took uh, for for yeah. winning sort of my division, but um, yeah, I, and those were the top people in the industry that were going out there to network. Um, and I don't think they, I don't know, think they do that anymore. But um, you know, those were in the days where a lot of money was spent on those types of entertaining um, yeah. um, activities. But yeah, I would say I don't, I don't think not learning to golf is going to put you at a great disadvantage, but it certainly would put you, it could give you an advantage. An open door. Yeah. So we've yeah. got a lot of questions. And it's in, fun. So I'm going to keep, yeah, it's, well, <laughs> for some, I think it's fun to drive the, <laughs> drive the golf cart. I like to drive the golf cart. But I'm good with that. Um, so here's a question um, that says, what grade would you give the hospitality industry's response to the pandemic so far? And how does it compare with 2008 and 9-11? Um, and would you uh, attribute any improvement in our response to increase in networking? Um, so uh, basically, how does the pandemic compare with the past two downturns that we've been through? And uh, do you think networking has helped? Wow. I, th I think the last downturn snuck up on us. It didn't happen all at once. <laughs> I remember yeah. I was at Galileo at the time and we were planning on going public and we saw, you know, first quarter come in and we're like, oh, I wonder what that means. And it just sort of snuck up. It wasn't a big drop. Um, and so, um, you know, I think, I think you had a lot more time to plan uh, and certainly wasn't anything like this where, you know, demand drops to zero and nobody's allowed right. to leave their house. Um, I think, you know, considering that nobody's ever experienced this, I think I think it would be a bit judgmental to say what kind of a grade. I don't think you can grade anybody on this, whether it's the president of the United States or Italy or Spain or, you know, the prime minister of the UK. They dealt with it, I think, the best they could with what they know at the time. Um, and uh, I, I, I would say I might reserve judgment to see what these companies did while they were shut down or while they were. So if they sort of hunkered down and did nothing, then I would say they missed an opportunity. If they said, this is a great opportunity to reevaluate what we're doing, how we do it, what technology we use, what business processes we use, what are the two or three things we're going to do differently when we come out of this, then I would give them a high grade. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. And just, you know, I, I mean, we, we've, Agreed. There, there's been nothing like this. You know what we've been dealing with over the last few months has has been has been greater than the combination of 9/11 and 2008. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard to 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 make a judgment on how we've done it. Um, I would say that there are some companies that were in a position that they could keep their staff and continue to pay them, which is amazing. But not everybody has that luxury regardless of what the reasons are. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, how they're dealing with things and how they're going to come out of this and how they treated and communicated with their team members along the way, I think is also telling, right? So, Lo, you mentioned, you know, taking advantage of, okay, take a step back and how, how might we retool or, um, uh, who we are, what we are, what we do, how we do things, but also how did we communicate and how did we treat those uh, regardless if they were still receiving a paycheck or not receiving a paycheck. They're still your employee. They're still human beings. How did we treat them along the way? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think is a good way to look at things. Yeah, yeah I think those companies, those, those companies, I don't think there were any hospitality companies, but those companies that basically announced on zoom that you lost your job yeah um, they you know they, i don't care if you have to lay off a thousand people you have one-on-one -on -one conversations that, yeah. with those people right a hundred percent agree and i've also heard you know companies that um have not had any communication from the time of layoff or the, or the time of furlough i should say um you know that's telling as well um but there are companies that have made a lot of efforts you know um 
newsletters, regular communication, reach out touch points one-on-one -on -one, um, just to check in and see how somebody's doing and, and maybe even give them updates, you know, on, on, um, on what the company's doing uh, to try and get them back. Um, opportunities for continued learning support. You know, there's a lot of different things that people could, could be doing. Not everybody's doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have uh, one more question from the audience and then uh, we're, we're down to about 14 minutes. So I've got a couple things I want to get to um, before, before we have to say goodbye. Um, so somebody asked if you've lost contact information for someone through job changes and such, how are you find, finding their contact data beyond LinkedIn? since it's often easy to overlook their messaging or limited contact data. Um, I mean, one way I've done that is just like, I'll call Kathleen or I'll call Flo. Yeah, or that's I'll exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, reach <laughs> out to people that you know. <laughs> yeah, reach out to those that yeah. you can ask. Yeah, and, and if, if I don't yeah, have that's, that's what I do. Maybe, you know, Flo has it or Carol has it. So, you know, that's to me the easiest way to do it. Yeah, I think we I are all the time, you know, the three of us just go back and forth on text. Hey, yeah. do you know so-and-so? Do you know how to reach them? Um, and there's nothing, no harm in, in asking. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so this is kind of moving into um, towards the end of, of our, you know, questions that we talked about the other day. Um, how do you believe that women can support others for continued growth and how can we have more C-level positions for women in our industry? Um, you know, there are a lot of women who are in the hospitality industry, but there are very few at the C level. So, you know, how, how do we advocate for those positions as women and how can we support one another when, you know, we want to see that be more equal perhaps to the split of, of how many women and men are in the industry? Flo, so you've, you know, you've been president and C level at, you know, at several different companies. Uh, I know you sit on a lot of boards. Um, so I'm going to let you take that one first. Um, but, you know, what are mm -hmm. your thoughts around that? I think we as women need to be the strongest advocates for other women. So that's, I think, where it starts. And that means being responsive when somebody contacts you, even if you don't know them, mm -hmm. asking for help or an intro or could we chat for 15 minutes? Um, because mm -hmm. as I said before, you get what you give. Um, I think as women, we have to be authentic and, and empathetic um, and, and we have to be honest when giving feedback, um, but we need to keep it constructive. Um, I sort of remember when I first started back in the late 80s and, um, you know, very male dominated and, and I would wear suits with little, little bow ties into the office um, because, you know, you sort of had to look and act and, and think like men, I think. I don't think we need to do that anymore. Um, but I think we do have to be cognizant of what we wear and how we look, how we sound. Um, you know, you have to be confident, strong, and assertive and, and come with solutions. Many times women speak um, and just their cadence, they end every, quest, every sentence like it's a question. Um, and so that, gives, that doesn't give a, a, a good uh, sort of view that you're you're confident. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it's important to be financially focused and get operational experience um, and ask for the job. You know, there are studies out there that have shown when a woman is offered a, a job, the first thing that goes to her mind is, am I qualified enough for this? Have I actually done it? Do I, you know, uh, can I do this job? Whereas a man says, well, I'll learn it while I'm doing it. Right. So women sort of want to prove to themselves that they can do the job, whereas men say, I'll prove myself once I'm on the job. Um, and so, you know, just be aware of your thought processes um, and um, get involved. And, um, you know, uh, that's, you know, that's the best way that I think that you can uh, you can get it. Sometimes you just have to ask for the job. Um, and show that uh, that you want it and you're qualified. Yeah, you, I you agree. Can't it wait. Not you so can't sit back and wait. Women, yeah, women sometimes sit back and say, yep. well, they should know that I'm a really good person and I've done a great job. Right. They don't notice me. Well, you know, that's because you're not telling them what a great job you're doing because we've been taught mm -hmm. that it's not nice to brag. Right. So that's interesting that you say that, Flo, because I think, you know, I was a director for a lot of years and I was at uh, uh, Kimpton Hotels and I 
walked into Jeff Sr.'s office and I said, you know, Jeff, I would really like to be promoted to vice president. And, uh, you know, if it's not going to happen here, then I'm going to need to just consider what my options are in the future. I'm not going anywhere right now, um, but, you know, I want to know, is there a path for me to get to vice president? And he goes, absolutely there is. And he was great. He was, an, he is one of those people who has always believed in me and um, gave me that opportunity. And, and within eight weeks, he, he put that through for me. I'm not saying that'll happen every time, but, you know, I had proven myself and I had done a good job and, you know, I, I just went in and had that conversation. Um, and always before, I was always afraid to, to ask, like they would think I'm too aggressive and yeah. instead of assertive or I'm too proud or I'm too confident or, you know, egotist, whatever. I had this in my head. And finally, I was like, I need to ask. Um, and, and it turned out really well for me. Um, and, and like I say, Jeff has always been a, a really great person to me. Um, but it was, it, it was, once the conversation got started, it was easier to have than I thought it was going to be. Um, I wouldn't say do that when maybe, you know, you're not performing the best <laughs> that you, that you can. Um, but I think that, um, we've got to be bold enough to, to ask for what we want. Uh, what do you think, Kathleen? Yeah, no, I totally, totally agree. And, um, you know, uh, you both touched on it. It's, it's how we're thinking inside of us, right? Our own thoughts. We have to kind of re- redo how we're thinking because if if we're always thinking that we should should not say anything because of being judged or being um perceived as too aggressive um then it will hold us back so you do have to put yourself out there it can be it, it's scary right um but it can be done it should be done in the right circumstances um given the right performance um, you know, it, it, make sure that the circumstances surrounding are in good standing, right? So you don't want to put yourself, yeah. Yeah. there are issues or if there's a lot of turmoil around you, um, a lot of people losing their jobs, you know, I've seen, I've seen people do that and it's probably not the best time to go out yeah. for something when a bunch of people are losing their jobs. Um, so you, you do have to be very cognizant of what is around you, but certainly yeah. ask and don't apologize for asking. Yeah. And I would say too, um, on that note, um, to generation, younger generation, um, I know it's not exactly the same now. I know, I know that we come perhaps, well, we definitely come from a different generation than those who are in their twenties today. Right. But, um, you know, I've had the, the experience where, you know, someone who was promoted from res agent to a coordinator would come and sit down with me and say, well, in one year, I want to be the director of sales and marketing. And I'm like, well, that's going to be a challenge. <laughs> so let's talk about, so when you're thinking about that career path, think about what your next step is. Yeah. Um, and because if you can do the next step, then you can be ready for the next step and the next step. And you typically you you probably won't be as successful as a director of sales and marketing if you don't have that experience in between a coordinator and a director. Right. Um, it's very rare for someone to be able to hop that because there are there are uh, career experiences uh, that that you need to have to get you prepped for that role. Right. So um, you know really think about that and what your next steps are, and then find someone uh, to to mentor you to help you get to that next step. So. Don't put all the responsibility on those who are, are being the mentors, but you go and ask somebody, will you, you know, Kathleen, Flo, will you mentor me? Will you, and it doesn't even have to be that professional. It can just be a once a month touch base. What questions do you have? Knowing you can text somebody, um, but look for that person who um, can help you grow. I think that's just uh, a very practical step that people need to take. Um, so I want to, we're about four minutes out. And I've got one last question, and I want to close um, with, with this. Um, so the, we mentioned this a little bit along the way, um, but, you know, networking and partnerships um, in, in your career are also become friendships. Like Flo said earlier, like we really care about each other. And, um, you know, the two ladies that are on sharing this, uh, this 
interview today with me have become very close personal friends. And, you know, 10 years ago when I went through one of the worst things in my life, uh, Kathleen was my first call. Um, we were business partners at the time. And I talked to Flo um, shortly thereafter. Um, and they, the, the thing about building a network and a partnership is that you also build friendships. Um, and, and it's one of the things that I've absolutely loved about the hospitality industry, because we are, even though we might be introverts or extrovert, extroverts, we are hospitable, we are in the hospitality industry, we did that for a reason. Um, so just realize the value of those friendships to not just your professional life, but to your personal life. Um, you know, I, I talk to Flo and Kathleen about my family, about decisions I'm making, personal decisions, not just professional. Um, and I confide in them, uh, you know, with what I'm going through. And they have been a huge support to me, both personally and professionally. And they have made my life so much more rich than it would have ever been. So thank you, ladies, for, for that and your role in my life. Um, so I want to close with, if there's one piece of advice you could give our audience for career growth, um, or even for growth as a person, um, what would you say? Kathleen, I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, for me, it's, it's simple. Be open. Be open to the opportunities that are put in front of you. Uh, Carol, just going back to, you know, the example that you were using earlier, you know, don't have, well, for me, what worked, I should say, is I never had a specific path that I wanted to go along. It was more about the opportunities that were presented to me. I was always open and, and I went with those opportunities when it felt right, and when it seemed right. But I never had a, a, an expectation that within X number of years, I'm going to become CEO or I'm going to become vice president or I'm going to become X. It was always, let me see what the opportunity is next. So I was very open and that is, to me, the biggest piece of advice that I give people. Hello? Yeah, much, much like Kathleen, I, I never had sort of a plan uh, for my career. In fact, the first day at Howard Johnson, I called my husband and said, I've made a terrible mistake. I'll never learn all this stuff. And he said, <laughs> keep your mouth quiet and observe. So, uh, but I, I, in addition to be open, I think never stop learning ask questions, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask for help. So I think with those two things, you know, uh, be open. And even if you're not 100% confident, um, you, you know, you can, you can grasp it. You, yeah. you don't have to be the yeah. expert in the room. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes I learned so many things from the people who are 20 something and 30 something in my circle. I'm like, man, I wish that I was that smart. So even being open to learning from the younger generations, I think is, yeah. for me, is really important now in my career to, to not be so proud that I can't learn um, from, exactly. from someone who yeah. doesn't have as much experience as I, I can learn on, on all sides. And so I think having that attitude of, you know, what can I learn today? Um, you know, one of my friends likes to say, um, even if you, you're in a conference and you don't particularly care for the speaker, well, figure out what is the meat that you can take from that because there's going to be a nugget and throw the bones away. Um, so, you know, always be learning. So, anyhow, ladies, do you want to so oh, yes? take Annette's question or? Oh, did Annette have another question? Oh, yes, no. I'm sorry, the 2021. I forgot. I didn't get to it. We're at three o'clock so quickly. What's your, in your crystal ball? Sorry, Annette. Go ahead, Flo. Flo? Oh, yeah. Well, if I had a crystal ball, I'd, I'd use it to buy a lottery ticket. But I think uh, <laughs> I, I agree with most of the pundits out there. Uh, slow recovery, domestic travel first, domestic leisure first, um, uh, international markets like London, Paris, uh, New York, anyone who really depends on the meetings business or, or uh, the international lift is going to be the slowest to uh, come. Uh, I've worked with the companies to basically say you need enough cash to survive until the second half of uh, 2021 and full recovery, probably not beyond that. Yeah. 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 I would agree. I, I, I don't really have anything specific to add. 
Yeah, I would say on the head and call uh, Tuesday, people were predicting 2023 to come back to 2019 levels. So, you know, it's a, it, we've got a, a, quite a hill ahead of us, um, but we're in this together, right? And that's what, that's what it's about. So I appreciate you ladies. Thank you so much for Thank being you, you have been to me in my career and, and as friends and for joining today. Take yeah, care. Thank you. Thank you both.